Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. I recently saw a demo by Soren Berger, great turner, in which he made a scoop. Now, I promptly wanted to make one like his. He, his process, he used either a jam chuck or his scroll chuck, but his, he turns a ball on the end of the handle. And so it, it requires that the ball be pretty near perfect. Now he uses a process in which he creates an octagon shape for the ball, which approximates the sphere, and then rounds it over. To get the measures, he has a special purpose caliper that will take the diameter and divide it down to, to make the measures that are other measures required. Now for me, I don't like special purpose or single purpose tools, so I went to my geometry and calculated the measures that would be required to make an octagon as his calipers were. This is for sizes 1 through 8 by eighths. Not a lot of measures here, it's certainly a lot cheaper than a dedicated caliper. I'll keep this handy and I will make this available on my website, aswoodturns.com, if you want to download it. So let's make a scoop out of the cedar. And we have to get bit. Oops! This one didn't make it, didn't survive sanding. So let's maybe en enlarge the part where it connects together and let's make a scoop from the cedar. First, the rough cut. Some would say to make every cut a practice finish cut. No way. I want to get through roughing as quickly as possible. There will be enough finishing cuts to practice on later on. There's a knot on the handle end that I'm a bit worried about. I'll watch it. Now I'll start marking out. I'm setting my dividers to my target diameter. I need the diameter at least slightly larger than my scroll chuck jaws grip. I chose 2.5 inches. I still have some to go, but I'll go ahead and start cutting a tenon on one end. Its only purpose is to provide clearance for when I shape. Next, I'll mark the opposite end and make a parting cut before starting to form the handle. Next, I'm consulting my cheat sheet to find out how long each face of the octagon needs to be. A piece of paper is a lot less expensive than a single purpose caliper. Turns out that each face is 0.414 of the diameter. I'll want to turn each tenon down to about 1 and 1 16th inch, then mark that point with a pencil to make sure I don't lose track of it. Next I'll remark the center, then center the dividers to mark the edges of the outer face. I've added another column to my cheat sheet for this measure, but from either end. But before doing much detail work, I'll waste away most of the handle. Next I'll cut a straight chamfer to make each diagonal face. Then split each face with a new pencil line to use to do the final rounding. After rounding off the sphere, I'll cut the handle's first axis profile. After sanding and finishing everything so far with beeswax and mineral oil, I'll cut shallow bee grooves to burn a pair of lines on the handle. Then shift the axis about a quarter inch away from the best side of the sphere. Then cut a short off-axis profile that will provide a little nub on one side of the handle. Then sand and finish the off-axis portion. Now to start cutting the bowl almost. I need a little tenon to grab onto for the bowl. I've set my dividers to my jaw capacity. I've removed one jaw to allow the handle to swing back far enough for my taste. 
a rubber stopper on my live center provides the hold. Then just a little scraping action to make the shallow tenon. Then replace the jaw and flip the scoop around and mount to the tenon. Next I need a depth hole just shy of the diameter. After setting the depth on the drill bit, I'll mark the hole's center with a skew to guide the bit, then drill out the hole. Then for the fun and risky part, hollowing the bowl. The handle is now canted out toward me, forming a cone of danger. Danger either to me or to the handle. But other than that handle flying around sounding like a propeller, no worries. Let's do this first with a small gouge. Later as the hole got deeper, this small gouge felt like it was flexing too much and I switched to a scraper. I also cut away part of the top of the handle just like Soren did. After careful sanding, remember that handle does not go away just because I'm sanding. I gave this scoop a good buffing at the Beal buffing system. I like my little scoop. This one's definitely a lot better than the first one. There will always be some scoops that fail, but hopefully only a small minority. Thanks to Sorenberger, it's not scary, except for the prospect of coming into contact with that handle as it whips around the tiny bowl. That's all for this week's video. Please like this video. If you haven't already subscribed, subscribe to my, both my website and YouTube channel. Always wear your full face shield. Goggles are not enough. Until next time, this is Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns.